Hi, this is Randy Finney with the Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market wrap for Tuesday, July 16th, 2019. Uh, didn't do a closing market update yesterday. As I mentioned last week, I'd probably cut those back to maybe a few times a week until the market wakes up. Uh, somebody really needs to hit this uh, market with the paddles and uh, bring it back to life. Uh, volume has just tapered down to almost nothing. Uh, you know, not even a holiday week, and you can see volumes just tapering off as we just slow grind higher. So but again, yesterday was was virtually flat. We've had just no movement. You zoom in, take the lines away. Look at these daily candles uh, lately, and there's just uh, no volatility, no money to be made. So I continue to focus my efforts and my trades elsewhere: agriculture, commodities, oil, natural gas, uh, uh, precious metals, and, and uh, miners are starting to perk back up. So at least certain areas there you know I've done some extensive videos there lately silver mining stocks looking looking nice too and especially silver so uh, we'll continue to look you know focus on where the opportunities are and I'll do these market updates just because because there's everyone wants to know where the stock market's going it's part of what I do and so today now we had a little bit of movement now the markets were virtually flat again I'm um, when I say virtually flat okay we have about a point you know spy was down about a third of percent Nasdaq was down about a half a percent small caps were flat but there were some technical developments worth noting all right well let's get to those real quick uh, let's throw on well we still have like I said nothing is going to Nothing has or will change in the longer term outlook unless this market really moves up uh, anytime soon. We still have uh, the negative divergences all the way out from the well from the 60 minute charts, the daily charts, which we're looking at here and the weekly and even the monthly charts. I've covered that quite a bit lately. No reason to loop back and, and cover all those time frames now. So uh, when you have these, you know, quarter percent flat days, half day, half a percent up down days, uh, you're not going to change anything on the weekly time frames. Uh, you need to see, you know, for those to change, you need to see some big red weekly candles. That means the market moved up or, or green for that matter, you know, take out the divergences and go on and, you know, start, you know, chipping away at the bearish case if, if the market wants to go higher. So that's it. Uh, but let me mention that today, you know, as I've told you recently in recent updates, I'm moving these trend lines. We had an uptrend line right there and it was valid. There were, you know, enough reactions to validate it. And I've since moved it out here. And if you look at it, it comes off the lows back in early June and we come in and we hit quite a few candles. So multiple reactions uh, broke down today, somewhat impulsive, but not very impulsive. Uh, that's, you know, when you see a breakdown, you want to see impulsive selling. Um, the more impulsive, the better helps to validate it. That would have been impulsive if that was a big red stick like that. With that being said, you can see the candle that we moved down through there was fairly impulsive. Today's uh, volume was still kind of anemic. Uh, not uh, not anything big. So again, I don't want to make a big deal out of it, but it would it warrants pointing that out. And I did point this out in the trading room. Uh, no, no front page. In fact, uh, I'll just say this for the uh, you know non-subscribers to the site out there that even though I'll, I'll, I'll cut back or will and until the markets wake back up, if we start to uh, you know, get some kind of, uh, you know, solid sell signals or, you know, something onto the upside that convinces me, hey, do some updates, this uh, market might start moving and wake up, then uh, I'll, I'll continue to go back to, or I'll revert back to the daily updates. Um, and I'll continue always to post intraday updates on the site. So this one was posted earlier today. We broke these wedge patterns that I'm covering right now for you. Uh, so both QQQ and SPY have broken these wedge patterns. This was in last night's update, which by the way was a public update. Even though I won't always do the videos, they take a little bit longer. At the end of the day, if there's nothing big, I'll post an update. And that's public content if it doesn't include anything else. Sometimes I'll wrap in gold, treasury bonds, other things uh, that are that are premium content. Uh, but this one, you could come into the site yesterday after the close. I posted these charts, SPY 60-minute charts that it continued to pinch up within that uh, chart on low volume. Uh, and this was today when I updated it. Again, that was this was last night's chart at the close. And then this was today. So I highlighted the breakdown right after it occurred. And uh, same thing, QQQ, we were pinched right at the top of the wedge and said if we broke down, we'd come down here to at least 191.28 uh, and quite likely more. Uh, so we did break down. This was the breakdown that occurred. This chart was screenshotted at 12.08 p.m. today, Eastern Time. And then somebody asked me uh, in the trading room, 
I'm sorry, not in the trading room. This is on the front page, public comment. Uh, would this be a good place to add a swing short to QQQ? Uh, and I, you know, my thoughts were could be a bit early. I shared this chart on the NQ telling you why I added this additional trend line to the NASDAQ 100 futures. This trend line that comes off the lows, the same low that we we're looking at on QQQ. And uh, here's, it's a potential trend line. Uh, well, was at the time we had another reaction. So there's one, two, three reactions so far. And again, uh, my, my, th my response there was you have to give the market the benefit of the doubt. I've been talking about these divergences, these wedges for weeks now. And every time we get a breakdown on one of these trend lines, it does play out for a little correction. There was a trend line break, but it's minor. And then we just keep wedging higher. So uh, while we're not going, we are going up, um, but we're not going up much. Again, uh, if that's your thing to make a you know quarter point a day, we made you know what 10 15 times that in, in the last three days on our natural gas short trade our crude short trade uh we've made in just you know two or three trading sessions what the market's done in weeks and so that's that's where i'll continue to focus my efforts on things that are moving and uh yeah you know with clear charts and that are also behaving well to the technicals again this one's just kind of grinding up it's whatever the market's doing these divergences are not they haven't been close to being taken out. In fact, they continue to steepen here. And again, that was that was today's chart earlier. Let me show you. Get back to right now the NQ 60-minute chart. So there it is. So this is a uh, uh, since I posted that one earlier today, you can see that's where the future stopped. There's several candles right there that that uh, traded on that level. This is comparable, that 7907, you can call it 7900 if you want to round it off. It's comparable to that level on, I showed you, the first target on QQQ, and it's a pretty big level because it's the breakout. This was a breakout to new all-time highs on NQ. In fact, if I take it back a little farther, if I do that without messing this chart up, sometimes you, the trend lines disappear if I go back too far. Yeah, it's not going to give it to me now. It's not loading. There were previous reaction highs at that level, quite a few, if you recall, in my recent updates, right at that level. So that whole thing, let me tighten back in. It's just a limitation of this charting platform. Uh, the reactions are there a little farther to the back. But uh, that's it. That was a breakout to new all-time highs. As I mentioned, it was a, an extremely lackluster breakout. You want to see on a breakout, uh, impulsive, uh, if it's a long side breakout like this, a bullish breakout, you want to see impulsive buying, you want to see increased volume, none of which we saw here. So this is just a dead stick breakout, you know, it's just nothing, the market's just floundering around. And, um, you know, if we drop below 7907, not the end of the world if uh, we recover it soon, but if we go back down through there, it is a failed breakout. And again, you want to look for the nature of it. Will it be an impulsive move back down through there? Will we make a solid daily close back below through there? And if so, there's some additional targets. Uh, let me loop back to the uh, QQQ chart. So again, this shows you that uh, 289.47 is roughly that level on NQ. I'm sorry, nope, that's SPY. I'm all over the place, guys. Forgive me here. I uh, looked at a thousand and one charts today. It was a busy day. All right, there's the breakout level. You can see it right there. Um, the previous highs on SPY. Let me turn or QQQ <laughs> back on QQQ. Excuse me. There it is, right there. We had this cluster of candles. Uh, QQQ couldn't get through that level. Tried again and failed. Finally broke out, and there's that lackluster breakout I'm talking about. Now look. Give it, give credit where credit is due. It is a breakout, and until unless it fails, that's that's what it is. Uh, but it's the kind of breakout that I put high odds on failing for many reasons. Again, talked about before, the divergences, the lack of impulsiveness, the uh, overbought nature, uh, breath deterioration, everything I've covered in recent weeks. Uh, so uh, we just have to wait for this market to come back to life and. Um, if it can strengthen, you know, the, the technicals on the upside, it's going to take a little while for me to get on board long. But again, until then, I'll fry fish elsewhere. Uh, you know, individual stocks, commodities, ETFs, uh, you know, precious metals, things like that. All right. Uh, let me give you a couple other levels to watch. That was QQQ. And again, watch for a failed breakout there. And, and also, do we start moving impulsively lower? If so, SPY. Drag this trend line out a little bit, little bit more. Again, you can do that. That's that seems to be what the market's doing. Walks up, breaks a little trend line. Walks a little higher, breaks again. Here's where I had it before. So if you look at it that way, and I think that's a valid trend line. 
um, where you have a, a move off the lows, quite a few reactions all along here, a breakdown, and so far about a week of back testing and starting to roll over. So you can look at it that way. You can look at it this way, which is also a valid trend line. I know trend lines are subjective, um, but uh, you have one, two, three, uh, and now four candles there, as I showed you with NQ a minute ago, the NASDAQ 100 futures, we closed right on support. So that is, I guess, the common theme, the takeaway here is that uh, we're on support. Uh, we could break it again and maybe the same thing happens, a little correction, we extend the trend line. But as of now, you you know, I, I haven't given up on technical analysis. So you need to respect the break of that trend line, uh, all those trend lines, plural. You want to see QQQ and SPY breakdown. And then how is it? Is it impulsive? And if it is, do we come back here? There's the previous highs, roughly, roughly 294 on SPY. We popped above it a few times. So you can say more of a range, about 296 down to 295. Uh, so what happens if we break it? Do we come on in? Do we back test the highs successfully and go off to the races? If so, do we burn through these divergences or do we keep going down? This this would be a tell right here. This would give us some clues how any back test those levels on QQQ and SPY, meaning those previous highs from back uh, earlier in the year, how the market acts on those. Uh, so. Uh, you guys know nothing's changed in my longer term views. I still see a lot of downside in this market in 2019. I'm talking double digits, um, but uh, we just don't have the catalyst yet. So I will wait patiently until we do uh, for the next setup. All right. So there's SPY broke down again uh, today, like I mentioned, coming up on support. You can see all a bunch of different levels there. There's QQQ. Uh, that's what it looks like with the uh, some support levels nearby and I already showed you the futures did I show you ES maybe not ES are the S&P 500 e mini futures they actually cracked today uh, at the lows but remember I always say this even though NQ is my trading proxies my I trade mostly NQ and RTY when it comes to the indexes RTY or the Russell 2000 futures um, but any signals I take I will wait for confirmation uh, from if I'm trading uh, the large caps, for example, NQ, I want to see both uh, NQ and ES breakdown. Or if I was trading ES, if I decided to put a trade on ES and this breakdown happened, but as I just showed you, NQ was at support, I uh, give it the benefit of the doubt because what may happen is if NQ bounces off support here, uh, then SPY, which we'll flip back to now, or ES, I should say, the net S&P 500 futures, that's likely to prove a false breakdown or maybe you get a back test. Uh, so you want to see both breakdown and again, uh, not just limp through because that's been what's happening recently with this low volume. You know, prices are limping through levels and you're just not seeing buyers or sellers step in. This market's slow grinding higher right now. Uh, there's a minor level I'll give you real quick if you're a ES trader that I just uh, noticed here. Well, pretty decent level there too. And that's at about 30.05. Um, there you can see that was resistance right here. It was resistance right here. We broke above it. We back tested and we back tested again. So I, I can tell you clearly, here's what I'd look for tomorrow in the overnight session. We break below the lows, the today's lows in ES, that's going to break that support. We're already below the trend line. That would trigger the next sell signal, break below uh, 3,000 or 3,005 if you want to be safe. And uh, that also coincides with not price support, but that trend line support that I showed you on NQ. So we could have dual sell signals. Now NQ unfortunately has a little support, pretty decent support actually just below. Um, but watch that. If that goes as well, all the better. So these are the levels we'll be looking at, all near-term stuff. Um, so uh, that that should seal the deal right there, at least in the near term, break below 79.07 or so on NQ. Because uh, if that happens, most likely the SPY will have, or ES will have also taken out that level that I showed you a minute. And uh, that's it. Um, a lot of little micro levels to watch. Again, um, maybe some trading ops coming up. And I'll say this, you know, the market, you know, sometimes when everyone just gives up and complacency is at, at its highest and and people resign themselves to so the market's never going to drop again, uh, that's that's usually when it does. So just keep in mind, volatility, you know, you just look back for the last, uh, last couple of years really now. Uh, and one thing this market has showed us, take away all the lines here, is that uh, it doesn't it hasn't really traded sideways much it's either going up 
like this or down and you know there's these little micro trends sometimes in there um, but you have these bigger trends let me just here highlight those big uptrend big downtrend big uptrend pretty big downtrend you know little kickback rallies along the way big uptrend so don't fall asleep at the wheel because the next uh, you know downtrend is likely to be um, pretty good and I think it could possibly be very very lucrative on the downside we just need there's some work to be done on the technicals now to see a bearish crossover on the PPO keep those negative divergences intact ideally it's not absolutely necessarily but right now the you can see the indicators are still making lower highs as prices make higher highs so that keeps that negative divergence intact and we just need a catalyst right now I went over this in the update on Friday heavy earnings calendar this week heavy economic calendar this week and next um, you add that in with all the geopolitical crap that's going on lately you know it, it quite likely this is to me this looks like a technical setup awaiting a fundamental catalyst and so that's it so you know no reason to force this market right now but but be ready to move if uh, you know we get some good sell signals coming up soon we'll wrap it up here this has been Randy Finney with right side of the chart Hope you enjoyed it.